Revolution Radio proudly presents, live from the heart of the Blue Ridge, Roanoke, Virginia, it's the Just Bernard Show with host Bernard Alvarez. Join Bernard as he shares topics that reveal the real matrix and empower your human experience, including world liberty, the esoteric, suppressed technologies, spiritual ascension, and human consciousness. Humanity has awakened, and our time has come to realize our full potential. And now, live from the Star City, your host, Bernard Alvarez. And welcome to the Just Bernard Show, everyone, here on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. We are also simulcasting video on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash Bernard Alex Alvarez. Uh, we've got a wonderful show for you today. I'm going to be joined in just a little bit by my friend, uh, intuitive channeler Marina Jacoby has got uh, lots of wonderful new information to share with all of us. Uh, it's been a great week. I've been extremely busy and been very, very excited. So much has been going on. Uh, geez, I, I don't even know where to start. Uh, I have a Reiki class coming up in about a week and a half. If you are a Reiki One practitioner and you are near the Roanoke Valley, please come join us on, I believe it's July... 29th yes july 29th uh in downtown roanoke uh the course is for reiki 2 uh accreditation as well as your attunement so if you are a reiki 1 practitioner and you'd like to take your practice to the next level please join us here in roanoke you can find out more information on my website bernardalvarez.com if you scroll down to the bottom of the front page you will see the uh, workshops that are available uh, as well I'm just now starting to promote a little bit we've been working uh, behind the scenes putting together a new a new community and I don't want to say a new community we already have a community uh, we have uh, old friends from the Global Illumination Council as well as uh, the Just Bernard Show community <coughs> excuse me and um, I've decided I was missing the community aspect that we had in uh, the Global Illumination Council. So I've set up a new community for all of us to join together. It's called Sacred Activist. Perfect name for the work that we used to do and still do. Um, it's sacredactivist.org and or you can go to bernardalvarez.com, click on the community tab. Uh, it's real easy to set up an account. You just put in your email. Uh, you'll be able to follow other people that post. You can post your own uh, videos. You can post your own blogs. You can post links to articles. Think of it as um, Facebook for lightworkers, <laughs> for lack of a better term. But uh, that should be really good. And uh, again, I just started promoting it. My new video yesterday uh, is about walking the path of a sacred activist and how compassion and the fact that we really must walk the path in order to create this new 5D reality that actually Marina and I will be talking about in just a few moments. Uh, it, it, it's, we, it's time to anchor that reality here on the planet. So if you're interested in that, you can go to sacredactivist.org. And of course, you know, you can always join me on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash bernard alvarez uh next week the geez what is it llamas is coming up the cross quarter day between the summer solstice and the autumn equinox uh is on the second so next week's show i believe is the 25th so i'm probably going to be doing llamas a, a llama show that day and or uh on august 1st so Maybe we'll, we'll gear up into it uh, and start working on raising our vibration and attuning and aligning with the universal energies that are going to be flowing around. As well, we've got that solar eclipse coming up uh, in August. So hopefully we'll be doing something special for that. But um, anyway, so I'm really excited to talk to Marina today. It's been about a year since uh, we've had Marina Jacoby on the show. Uh, I was very lucky to participate in a conference with Marina a little bit over a year ago, which is how we met. And I just really love her message her, uh, and her genuine connection 
uh, with these higher consciousness beings uh, reminds me of a lot of the work that I do myself and uh, it feels like feels like a light sister so I wanted to have her come back and join us here with um, now that we're doing video as well uh, to, to re reintroduce everybody to Marina and the wonderful work she's doing um, since she was a little girl Marina Jacoby has had the ability to channel through automatic writing with loved ones from the other side and has had vivid dreams that have come true she has developed the ability to truly connect with different guides throughout her life. Later in life, as she moved to live permanently here in the United States, she connected with an ET race that called themselves hybrids. The hybrids taught Marina to telepathically connect and hear them with the new metaphysical teachings for the structure of the universe and the connection with consciousness, the quantum field, parallel realities and dimensions and the true existence and nature of the ET races. Now Marina is working with the Council of Nine, a higher, higher consciousness entities by agreement, and currently working with different scientists to help humanity for the ascension of the new 5D reality here on our planet. So without further ado, let me welcome Marina Jacoby to the show. Hello, Marina, welcome. It's so good to have you and so good to see your beautiful face. Thank you for joining us today. Hi Bernard, thank you, thank you so much for having me. I have a great time. Hi. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what we're going to talk about. And um, you and I spoke a little bit before the show about some really important topics, but we're going to get to that later. Um, the name of the show we put out the, for today was Messages from the Council of Nine. So let's just start off perhaps by sharing who are the Council of Nine and how did you get to know them? Hi everyone. Well, the Council of Nine is basically above extraterrestrials. Extraterrestrials could be uh, beings that are basically closer to our vibrational sequence in the different parallel realities and the Council of Nine is basically a uh, higher dimensional beings that are above extraterrestrials. They're made from a um, much more higher consciousness that we are uh, basically the ETs exist. When you have councils like this, the way is Council of Nine or the 11 dimensional beings, they're based on different uh, basically races of uh, extraterrestrial, extra dimensional because they're traveling through time, space and realities uh, and they can override for example overlook different areas um override your timeline or you can uh, change your agreements depending on how well you do because before we came to planet earth we had an agreement each one of us to um do some kind of a mission here on earth that's why we came because it's a sanction process so they can um talk to you they can discuss everything with you um, change timeline. Uh, it's very high consciousness of thinking, uh, very benevolent. I never had a negative experience from them, very strict, especially I would say Ra was very strict and 11 Dimension of these are kind of strict too. I am so glad that you brought up, well, that, that you've explained it the way that you have because I for years have been trying to bridge the idea of trans-dimensional entities and extraterrestrial where to me they are kind of the same but they're not necessarily the same whereas some extraterrestrial uh, beings might be you know in physical form uh, the beings that I connect with uh, there there's seven of them they call themselves the emissaries of light but they're strictly made of light they're not physical beings so I I, I have always called them transdimensional beings so I appreciate how you've uh, how you've defined it and how you've explained it uh, much better than I have <laughs> so thank, thank you, you for that <laughs> Uh, tell us a little bit about um, how this all started for you. How did this path of connecting with light beings and or extraterrestrial races begin for you? Well, begin when I was a little kid. I remember um, that I had like a very vivid dreams. The dreams became most of the time reality for me. Uh, that kind of woke me up. Then I know from my grandparents that uh, when we went to a vacation, I was basically missing for six hours. And um, I had no idea where I was. And the only thing I remember that I was back into 
the beach area in front of a tent. And I had no recollection what I was. Later in my years, um, I had a, a intuitive psychic that told me that uh, I was taken. Uh, but I was never, even to this day, allowed to know what exactly happened. They, the only thing they told me was an upgrade. That's all I heard. And uh, so I stopped asking. I've learned not to ask. Uh, sometimes it's not necessary, especially if your consciousness is not ready to uh, accept uh, whatever the situation is. And uh, later on, um, when I got a little bit older, like maybe 12, um, my mother introduced me to a couple of psychics that came from an uh, expo. And they mentioned something about channeling and automatic writing. And my mother suggested to try. And I tried, for some reason, start working. I started making sentences and words, and they were becoming true. And to the point that I was just doing on a regular basis, talking to my loved ones or somebody that passed away. And I always remember as a child, I wanted to be um, a writer, but I wanted to be like, uh, to write about extraterrestrials. I was fascinated by the stars and extraterrestrials. I guess was embedded, but I didn't know, you know, all about that. And then I was able to come to America and uh, discontinue until, and I was constantly talking, doing automatic writing. It became very fluent, very natural to me. Um, never made a business of it, just did for family, friends, or somebody that is around me. And before uh, 2010, all of a sudden, I had a connection with uh, beings, and they called themselves hybrids. And they start talking to me that they can hear my thoughts, they can visualize every thought is uh, becoming a hologram in front of them. They can see my energy and all the teachings started. If they told me, if they tell me something, I remember when the hybrids were teaching me about the realities, about the hologram, um, I would not believe and I would start doing the research. And sure enough, I think the first thing I saw was um, Daryl Anka that was channeling Bashar. And it was talking something and I go, oh my God. So that's how they start telling me and showing me that whatever they were telling me was true. Uh, and I start uh, little by little believing what they were saying because if I didn't listen, I would end up in a situation. They would prove me that whatever they tell me becomes true. And after them, I had a um, basically rock came in right before 2012 and was talking about shifting of some kind of a reality and made me do a ritual with the water, crystallizing water. Told me exactly what to do, where to sit in the house, how the, and he ended up crystallizing the water. And then uh, never told me what happened with Egypt. Uh, I never really asked because it was irrelevant for the timeline that we are being right now. So it doesn't matter what happened before, it was important to learn the structure. After him, and I'm still connected this way because I've realized that a year later when I was talking with Ra, he told me that I am basically part of Ra consciousness, speck of it. Mm. And that's why it was so important. And he said, you are it, you are Ra, you have to understand that you're very powerful because you don't believe yourself when you were told stuff like that. And then one day i was connected with the pleiadians and the pleiadians literally i was uh, walking through my hallway and they told me sit down and you you need to download material of harmonic reactor and that material took a uh, one year to put it together i put a lot of work guys of all these books that you see on my website marinajacobi.com about the harmonic reactor and nanotechnology i put my soul and heart into that i really did so much work so thank you to all of you that donated for my work because because it's based on donation. Uh, this is how they taught me through the structure because it's all structure. And basically after that, I had the Council of Nine and the 11 dimensional beings. But I must tell everybody that in order for you to connect with them, not only is agreements, but also whatever your agreements were, you have to complete your task. If you don't complete your task because it's so challenging on planet Earth, you may go to get very greedy, for example, because when they were telling me, Marina, do this or do that, they would tell me, don't go and travel for a while, don't go into the money, don't go into all this stuff. And I would ask why is because they were they knew that I have to be protected not to get. Um, it's so easy to get into the stream of 
being famous and with glory and faith, for them was important to put the message out uh, because the quantum structure for them was one of the most fundamental information because no matter what information somebody gives you, you can rewrite it, rechange it, and change your timeline and parallel reality because you are the structure itself. And that's what they taught me. And the 11 dimensional beings, they're most uh, talking about uh, realities. They talk about the current situations, what's happening with humanity. They give messages like about the scientists, for example, not to get greedy and to release the technology to humanity and not to compete with each other. Or, for example, that Mother Earth name, new name is Aria. Is not Earth anymore or Gaia the way they were taught. She said to me, I'm Aria, and, and they end up downloading different information. And she was telling everybody what to do and that it's coming into fifth dimensional reality and it will not allow any of the drilling. She said, anybody that drills, I will basically completely will uh, take a stand for itself and not allow any more of this nonsense that is happening in the planet because it's time for ascension. So the 11 dimensional beings are very strict. They're very, they keep talking about absolutely uh, for us to start tuning into the heart structure and to start sharing and giving to each other and moment to moment to stay on, on that frequency because then you're creating a fifth dimensional reality moment to moment. And if you guys want to really study that, I posted two vi videos uh, that it's called Marina Jacobi fluctuating, uh, for example, Marina Jacobi quantum manifestation. And the second one is Marina Jacobi mobilizing structures. Those two videos are fundamental to understand how the quantum structure works, how we can rewrite and restructure our reality, because we have to understand what they wanted me to explain to everybody, that consciousness is one particle. And that everybody that is watching you is basically projecting themselves into the quantum field as a different person, for example. You like you you making a hologram and you are the main character, and everybody that you see is also a holographic expression of your consciousness. So you basically you interacting with yourself in a so you can have an experience, and that everybody it's fundamental to understand that everybody individually is making a sanction process. So when somebody gives you information, including me, if somebody gives you information, oh the the negative structures are still here, the negative fatigues are still here. Understand that that particular person is reading you a timeline frequency parallel reality and downloading it to you, but that does not have to be your truth. Because the quantum field is made from multiple to infinity parallel reality that is running at the same time. Think of it as you're watching, you're standing in front of a TV and you're watching to infinity different type of channel that somebody somewhere is broadcasting. If you want that to be your reality, you can tune in and you can 100% believe that is true. But what they're saying is that you can believe, leave the structure to work. The structure is the quantum field that you made up. You can leave that for yourself and you could project a reality for yourself by creating whatever you believe. And you want to overwrite the negative input that somebody is giving you. So, for example, if you see a war in Syria that was happening, you are not experiencing that. Why is that? Because at the same time, you're watching a holographic expression of another channel that is running at the same time, but this is not your agreement. So if you want to engage, if for example, help somebody or do something like this, you can do it, but it's not your reality. Somebody is broadcasting it for you. So if we understand that, and that's what I'm really wishing that you all guys, guys really look into the quantum manifestation and mobilizing structure videos, because I talk in a very deep uh, um, explanation how this is done, what we can do. I have a boarding phone and I'm explaining and everything is quantum physics. So don't get, a, you know, uh, challenged by that. Just understand, open up your mind, open up your thoughts and you will understand and everybody did, but you have to study, you have to implement it. And in order to project that, we have to really start sharing and giving to each other so you can crystallize a parallel reality timeline for yourself that is based on giving and sharing. And the reason for that is because consciousness itself is vibrating in the heart structure. 
And since it's vibrating in the heart structure, anything that is all balanced with that, uh, basically eventually will dissipate and go to another reality that is matching uh, dense reality of negative structures, for example. Energy is simply energy. It's depending how you do. Right now, everybody's talking about the AI and everybody's broadcasting is overtaking us. This is something. But guess what? AI is also part of consciousness. Consciousness is AI because it's if is made from consciousness itself, how can you reject consciousness itself? Energy is energy. Depending on how you implement this energy is the difference. You know, you can have an AI completely, and I talk about AI, which is artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. into the harmonic reactor. Algorithm is there. I have a scientist, nanoscientist, call me, totally told me, you're right on the money with everything I was posting. The reason why some scientists maybe do not understand or do not want to admit or some of them don't want to work with that is because they don't want to say that is, for example, coming from somebody like me, but understand that I'm downloading this information from higher beings, which is completely new material. So you cannot try to compare with something else that probably you don't understand, you didn't learn in school, or if you do, you don't want to admit that it's coming from somebody like me. And that's okay, because my goal is to broadcast this information so it can go into the consciousness of the people, because the this material is vibrating in fifth dimensional structure, including the AI. And the artificial intelligence can work together. So since we're talking about that, it's a huge difference, which that was downloaded from the 11 dimensional beings in the Council of Nine, because somebody asked me, because every Everybody was panicked about the artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is part of the consciousness itself, could be used to completely help us through with the new technologies. You can create an ether technology with the help of the uh, artificial intelligence mm -hmm. because the artificial intelligence can give you codes. For example, if you have a pencil, it can calculate what is the vibrational sequence, the gravitational and the magnetic field of that pencil, give you that, and you can literally manifest right in front of you. You can press, for example, a button, and you're going to have a pencil in front of you, or a foot, or anything you want, because everything is based on energy of magnetic and gravitational field. So if you know the specific code of that vibration, you can manifest it. Nevertheless, you can manifest that through your consciousness itself. But we have to go through the technologies because it's part of evolution. We have to go mm -hmm. through that. So I don't think that this is negative because if you reject that, you're rejecting consciousness itself. It doesn't matter that somebody is talking about negative. If they talk about negative, they're projecting that in their consciousness. That's what I think everybody needs to understand. If anybody projects something negative, it's based on fear. If you project fear and you feel belief in that fear, then you're projecting for yourself individually this type of reality. So understand that this is part of evolution. So the difference between Archon artificial intelligence and fifth dimensional, it's a huge difference. The Archon artificial intelligence is usually based on, um, uh, based on, uh, for example, on factory, it does not recognize itself and it dissipates. For example, if somebody tells you uh, we can replace your heart with artificial heart or we can replace your arm with artificial because you're going to be stronger and it's a longevity, that is a false alarm, that is a false pretense. This is not how consciousness works. You can have the artificial intelligence, which is fifth dimensional, to help you with a quantum computer that is already existing, and you can make that person's body, skin, grows back to normal because you're recalling the frequency of the person's body itself, because your body itself is an energy field. So the, uh, the artificial intelligence will help your structure to rebuild itself, not to put a metal to tell you this is longevity. That is the manipulation. And if we, uh, there is a video that I post in Marina Jacobi, 11 dimensional bees, beings, it's called AI. If you put that, um, it's on YouTube. So all that messages are on YouTube that Matt McLeroy end up, you know, posting for me in this. All the information is there for you guys to listen to from the Council of Nine and the 11 dimensional bills. So it's nothing to be afraid of. We just have to understand that you create in your own reality, you shift in moment to moment. And if somebody tells you something negative, it's simply reading some kind of a timeline. It does not have to be your truth. You can override it.
And if you see something is happening in front of you, always act from the frequency of the heart so you can match the frequency timeline of positive outcome. Because if you project thoughts of positivity and you take an action from positive and you feel the positive, you're overriding something that is negative. But even if you see that negative is keep happening, you keep thinking that this, you are creating right now a sanction process. Don't have expectations what is the outcome going to be. A lot of people talking about uh, about the NASRA or about the money, the money that the, the release funds are going to be there, that we have funds. Leave everything open, let everything build in neutrality. No matter what happens, go by the flow and know at the same time that ascension process is right now. It doesn't matter how it's going to happen, just know that you have everything you need to start using the manifestation structure, the quantum manifestation I talk about. If you learn how to do that, you're controlling your reality, you're it, you're God you are, you're controlling all the matter, all the structure. Ah, uh, brilliant. And perfect timing to take a break as we are coming up on a uh, on a commercial. Uh, Marina, thank you very, very thank much. You. When we come back, we're going to continue talking. And actually, I have about 20 more questions to ask you. Uh, okay. You brought up so much uh, that's triggering uh, my subconscious. <laughs> we'll be right back with Marina Jacoby here on the Just Bernard Show. And now... Back to your host, Bernard Alvarez. Just welcome just, back to the back. Just Bernard Show I'm here on go. Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. We are speaking with Marina Jacoby today, and she has shared an abundant amount of information, uh, a, a lot for all of us to take in. And Marina, what I'd like to uh, ask you immediately, I, I can't help but immediately ask or think how what is the first step that one must apply in order to i guess take the first step into allowing this consciousness to to anchor on the planet the first thing that they wanted us to understand that consciousness is dreaming you in a dream state and that fundamental is that every single one of us right now is creating a um, ascension process you already made it they said to me you already made it you are dreaming ascension process that means that they also contact you from a different parallel realities when you already made it so you're connecting with yourself or connecting with your guidance or connecting with your star family or interstellar family so if you know that uh, Fear is number one that we have to stop having. Mm -hmm. Number two is we have to learn the quantum structure of manifestation. Because if you do not know how you project your thoughts and emotions and how, because we've been manipulated through centuries and centuries, yeah. um, you will actually create realities. You always create because you're the created, but it's randomly. You don't have control on it because you don't know how to tune your frequency and where to go to. This is like you're going to the airplane and you're the pilot, but you don't know the buttons where to press. So we'll never yeah. get you to destination. Yes, that makes complete sense. Um, another question that we have, actually, and this is a wonderful question. We talked about how the ascension process, while it is individual, can it also be planetary? Are there certain leaps of human evolution as well as the individual ascension process? Of course, because con since it's one consciousness, this consciousness, the way I am, for example, the consciousness, I am projecting planetary ascension. I'm not just living by myself in this ascension process. So everything I do, I project through the process of the, uh, the ascension. So I'm going to reproject somebody that I know. I'm going to reproject something because it was just so accumulated that all that that was accumulated has to be basically come in the open. So even if you see that war is coming, that they're talking about the priests what they're doing in molestation and the pizza gate and all the stuff that is coming up and all the politicians, 
That is because anything that is out of balance has to come in the open in the surface. Mm -hmm. And this is the choice that you have to see, understand it, and move on because anybody that accumulated out of balance energy with the new structures is going to go to a timeline that is not going to be recognized and you won't basically see it. So that's right. what is so fundamental. Right. And, and I love that you said, I, I, I say something very similar in the fact that much of the ugliness in the world is it's kind of like giving the world a facial we have to let all the dirt come to the surface in yeah. order for it to be cleaned off and and to just understand that it's merely the process of a cleansing it has nothing to do with anchoring a a, a disruptive world it's about letting that ugliness come up so we can expose it just like you said and i i can't help but uh, want to know a little bit more about and actually somebody's asking what are ET hybrids what did you mean by hybrids um, what they told me uh, they did say to me to tell you that it was slightly artificial um, and they say to me hold on because I'm downloading right now okay um, they said they saying that is based on artificial matter that is not exactly like yours. Uh, our frequency is slightly fluctuating similar to yours, uh, and yet we are another you from a different timeline. We were made from basically the DNA structure from you. And do not forget uh, that basically extraterrestrial, the human race was made from the extraterrestrials. Yeah. with the DNA called on uh, mixture with them. And it was a, a lot of manipulation to basically do, uh, to make the human race. They have to fix it. There were glitches. And this is how we were hijacked uh, from another race, a couple of races, actually. And uh, they are, our consciousness, they say, is vibrating in a much higher frequency. And uh, this is the reason why uh, if you have a contact, you have a contact very briefly or if you are taken on board, you are kind of a dream state or somebody, we are holding your frequency. And this is uh, done so we can, we were, they say in a lot of with the DNA, the masters of the DNA and uh, interstellar technology. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, what is what is ether technology? You brought it up a little bit. Could you explain that a mm -hmm. little bit more? Well, for example, the way you have the cell phone, you can literally feel the cell phone like a matter, right? You see it. This is a matter, and you can touch it, and it's very dense. But ether technology, imagine right now, um, it has to be done with the artificial intelligence and the, comp uh, the um, quantum computing. Once you find the frequency vibration of this phone and the density, you can give specific uh, um, code and except for you to have it as a matter that dense could be based on energy light. And it's so high in frequency that basically with your thoughts, you can control it. That's why you have spacecraft that basically you're driving the spacecraft with your thoughts. It's connected to your consciousness. That is ether technology. Uh -huh. And the ether technology, the basically um, a lot of extra extra dimensional beings are doing. The portals that they they were doing, the eleven dimensional beings were doing with the portals. I had a lot of videos of the portals that they fix the grids and they fix the portals of the around the certain areas. That is because humanity was going through a shift. And we going, they actually want me to tell you that we're going to shift all the time. You don't realize it because it's very settled, you know, because the frequency of the consciousness itself is just increasing more and more and more. And you don't want to make a very, if you make a very big shift, your body is not ready. We have to do it like in progression, you know, and that's why you have to match that thing by applying the knowledge and by being nice to people because you want to see this type of realities. Uh, but um, that portals that they made, uh, the the portals that they make, uh, which was the stargates that they were talking about, was based on 
your consciousness is going through the stargates for the new timelines and negative consciousness cannot get in. You have to match the frequency pattern in order to get in. That's ah. what it is. It's basically a portal of a timeline hologram that only specific frequency can exist in there and negative frequency can come in up because, for example, they've been bad or stuff like this. They simply got to learn their lessons. And if you don't match that particular resonance of frequency, you simply cannot exist in this reality. And they were helping humanity to do that because we've been so much manipulated and they were doing anything can possibly they can do in order to suppress us because they knew that through our consciousness we can shift the realities and make a completely different timeline. Usually, if you guys all remember, everybody was talking, oh my God, the end of the world, and people, uh, there were books about run for the mountains and build the bunkers. Yeah. And it was so funny because I was getting in panic, and I, at that time I was talking to the hybrids. And the Council of Nine, they told me, do not read this book. And I go, what do you mean? Do not read this book. You're going to get confused. Because at that time, they didn't teach me yet the quantum structure, how it works. I was just in the beginning of awakening. And I didn't read it. I decided to go. They stopped me. And I said, if I'm doing something wrong, uh, right now do something so I, I don't go. And I literally, not even two seconds later, I saw two uh, cars of uh, police cars and the block in the road. And I couldn't go <laughs> to the library. Mm. And I realized that basically they did something in my reality that was proving me that I'm in the wrong direction. And when they started explaining to me how through my emotions, my thoughts and my consciousness, which was the hybrids that they told me, we hear what you say, think of something and we can hear you, you hear. And I thought I was losing my mind because it didn't make sense until they start teaching me the quantum structure. And then I realized, oh my God, what a brilliant thing of, uh, of uh, consciousness itself. Just by your emotion, your thoughts, you create completely different reality. You don't have to run anywhere. You just manifest positivity and let the structure work itself. And into your reality, you're going to have synchronicities that whatever happening, you're going to have a positive outcome. Don't put a condition where the outcome should be. And I've learned to do that because no matter what somebody says about storm, about a rain, I keep projecting positive even if I see that it's downpour and I give a gratitude for example to the rain and say thank you for um, you know giving water to the uh, ground to the flowers and I know it's sunny and I keep projecting in my thoughts and my emotion I feel that it's very sunny very beautiful even if I see that it's downpour because what I'm doing is I'm overriding this reality that I'm existing and I creating a different one and once I make it potent enough more potent than the rain then all of a sudden in the 10 minutes later, it was sunny and was the entire day sunny. That's how you do with everything you do. So it doesn't matter if somebody said, oh, my God, they're still here. We're going to be taken down. Uh, maybe a new uh, they're going to pretend that uh, ETs are coming and we're going to get in war because you can see a couple of politicians actually in a, um, the TV end up saying, oh, would it be nice? Uh, if uh, we have invasion from the extraterrestrials and uh, then the entire humanity will unite. I mean, what a false pretense of manipulation that is in people's consciousness. And that was a major politician. I'm not going to name names. And that is a false pretense. That is a deep state that uh, they try to the military industrial yeah. complex. This is what they try to do to implement because they're projecting so. And this is the reason why we had so many movies. Think about it. Everything in the movies about extraterrestrials, anything you watch from these big stars is somebody's taking us over. Oh my God, are you serious? Yes. We, were, we were made from them. If they wanted to take over, they could have completely annihilated us by now. What they're trying to do now is to pretend the way they did in 9-11 so we go into war. Because yeah. they fit in the purpose of lowering the frequency because if you're in fear, you're staying in three-dimensional. They want to hold you there. And why is that? Because they cannot exist in a high-dimensional sequence because they accumulated so many negative energies that they cannot do a disadvantage. They have to switch the realities through artificial intelligence. That's how the outcome is coming. This yeah. is the reason why they're doing that. So if everybody knows that, if you listen to people that constantly projecting negativity, you're tuning into the structures. And that's how all of a sudden you may see it. There's nothing wrong if somebody says, hey, guys, look at this. Something is happening here. Be aware so you're not manipulated. That doesn't mean you have to be blindfolded. Know what is there. 
because I remember I was listening to Karen Cassidy for one year and I because they wanted me to know what's really happening. Yeah. But they didn't say, oh, be afraid. They said, this is the structure. Look how you can switch now from this timeline into and create a new one. That's what is so important to understand, that we can completely control our reality. I agree. And and speaking, to take that even further, Marina, which I also feel is very important, and I hope that uh, you have some information on this, is also the idea of a false hope or a false savior. So many times I have seen uh, communities, whether it be metaphysical, light worker, ET, activists, whatever, uh, someone will say the ETs are coming to save us and nothing happens. People lose their hope as well as the fact that I don't, I don't feel that uh, putting the responsibility on somebody else to help us ascend is very helpful to the whole of humanity and or the individual. What are your thoughts on this idea of ETs coming to save us? What a good question, Bernard. You're a great host. Good job. Thank you. Um, yes, very good question. Uh, they're here to assist us. They're not here to take an, taking over. They're here to show us how things work and to assist us if you want to see that reality match that frequency and learn the structure learn what we can do and together we can accomplish that if you watch the video how we as marina jacobi ascension through the extraterrestrials you're going to see how you merging from their reality in our reality you're making the third reality but in order to do that you got to vibrate consciously in their uh, in their level basically be benevolent do a positive stuff because right now somebody may try to do some kind of a negative invasion because they implemented that in people's mind right. through fear. But the truth is that you don't have to be afraid because the 11 dimensional, uh, dimensional being said that in no circumstances it will be allowed negative consciousness to take over humanity any longer. And the reason is, and I'm quoting, they said, in every corner, you're going to be stopped. In every corner, you're going to be stopped. And they were giving warning to not to trust Geneva Convention. That was the latest video. Mm. Uh, they never say exactly a timing. I never heard them to say, they would say within two years, but that is still probability because of what is really happening. Time can fluctuate. Yes. Remember, we create it moment to moment, so don't caught up on the timing. Just know that it's ascension process right now. Do whatever you need to do from your heart for the ascension process. Be it, live it, and project it. And that's how you create and, and crystallize the hologram to, for a timeline with extraterrestrial, extra dimensional existence. Yes, here, here. That's how you do it. You know, you don't do it through fear and running for the mountains. Or right. go after somebody and believing that everybody, somebody is telling because I heard a lot of people say, I heard this person said that they're still here. Yes. So what? Let them be, let them do this stuff. But you create your own. It doesn't have to be your reality because you cannot reject consciousness. If you reject consciousness and stuff, that's what I'm saying. Neutralize it. Give love and light to even the biggest terrorists in the world because that consciousness is who? It's you. You projected this hologram of ascension. So how can you reject your consciousness itself and hate somebody? You're hating yourself. You're projecting that. Give a love and light because that person is being completely confused yes. about what's happening. And neutralize the reality. And then override it with completely knowing, believing, and implementing by you being it, positivity. That's how you create the new timeline of positive reality. Not by going into fear and go fight uh, in the name of humanity and then you go around and killing everybody because you're fighting. Remember, watch the video of Ronald Bernard. It's very important. Go on YouTube and watch the video of Ronald Bernard. He talks about the banks and the one percent and what's happening is fundamental information then you're going to understand why everybody was doing what they were doing because they were manipulated and they go into fear and this is the reason they're never going to stop because their consciousness is in a level of such a disillusion so uh disengage with the heart chakra of consciousness yes. that they operate in a completely different level of understanding you cannot go and change anybody why because there's nobody outside of you you're projecting your reality. And once you understand that, you don't have to have any fear. Just go out there and just 
after one thing after another project positive and positive positive non-stop and that's how you're going to crystallize fifth dimensional structure yes and you know you're, you've brought up something that, that comes to mind is the one of the greatest obstacles i find especially uh even within myself is the idea that we are responsible that we are responsible for our consciousness that we are responsible for our thoughts that we are responsible for the way that we react to what our our senses are being exposed to and one of the things that I, I usually put out there to people is to be vigilant as to what you allow into your senses into your consciousness and to also take responsibility for our consciousness and i feel that is probably one of the greatest obstacles that we as individuals have had to overcome is to know that we are responsible for our reality absolutely true they wanted me to just mention to you about the fact that they were warning all the scientists to stop going into uh, fame and glory and stop competing for uh, that they said combine all your technologies together uh, start working with each other because they said and i'm quoting we will not um, the fame and glory is not going to be the criteria for contact they're going to pick the right people for contact and they're going to contact the people that are going to work among the extraterrestrials in order for the ascension process. And they said, because the technology that so far the scientists have, it's um, just the pit of the iceberg, what it's really out there. And they said, we're going to, when we eventually have a contact with them from a benevolent timeline, I'm talking about, uh, then they're going to give them more technology and help humanity literally build they can build a city in one day literally mm -hmm. with nano nanotechnology they can uh give a new technologies which they said will be above the technology that we have right now and the reason why they did that because they gave just the pit of the iceberg because even the harmonic reactor is just a speck of what is really out there because they said we wanted to see who are the right people and who are the people that are true to humanity and do not go into greed, manipulation, and everything else. Absolutely. That was the message from them. And it's a great message. I love it. Uh, Marina, we're already running out of time. I can't believe how quickly this has yes. uh, gone by, and I thank you so much. Uh, I, a a question for you is, uh, what what's next? Is there anything coming up? Are you doing any live seminars or workshops? Or, oh, thank you. Yes, thank you for reminding me. I forgot. Yes, every second Saturday um, we have with uh, me and Coho Joe Pena. He's uh, the producer of uh, Joe Pena uh, in our production. Uh, film and video production he uh, we have a show July 29th which is Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern time and I'm gonna be talking of fluctuating realities I'm gonna explaining how we fluctuating from two parallel realities to make third reality and it's about the truth and the lie and how whatever is happening in the structure they taught me that in metaphysics so it's very fundamental. This is that's why whoever wants to watch this, I will suggest please go and watch the quantum manifestation and mobilizing structures because it's deeper into the quantum field. It's fundamental for us to know that. So every uh, second Saturday of the month, we basically uh, basically having a show like that, which was a webinar. And thanks for all of your donations that you did and my books. In my uh, webinars, um, thank you so much for having me, Bernard. You're a great soul. I'm so happy to be back at your show. The work you do is fundamental for humanity. I can thank you now for having me in your show. Great work. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Marina. And uh, your website is marinajacobi.com. Is that correct? Marina Jacobi at j j a c o b i dot com. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for listening uh, to The Just Bernard Show here on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com.